Hi friends! Welcome to Stories in the Stacks with Summer. Home edition. My name is Summer Reyes and I am one of many dedicated volunteers at the Kaiser Community Library. Our sweet Kaiser Community Library is a non-profit organization, meaning we rely on volunteers, monetary donations, book donations, and we collect library card fees to keep our library going. Right now, friends, we are asking for donations. We are accepting monetary donations and book donations. You can find out how to give those right on the library's website at kaiserlibrary.org. And friends, you can also find out how to volunteer at the library right on the website. Friends, thanks for coming back this week to join me for a couple stories in the sex with me, Summer. I have an idea, friends. I was looking through my home stacks and I found one of my favorites by Shel Silverstein, Where the Sidewalk Ends. And I found a poem in here that I thought we could learn together. And then when we're able to gather again in the Kaiser Community Library, we can open our story hour each week with the same poem. What do you think? This is Where the Sidewalk Ends by Shel Silverstein. Friends, the poem that I was talking about is the first poem in this collection by the author. They did the drawings and the poems in this collection. And the poem is titled Invitation. Are you ready? If you are a dreamer, come in. If you are a dreamer, a wisher, a liar, a hoper, a prayer, a magic bean buyer, if you're a pretender, come sit by my fire. For we all have some flax golden tails to spin. Come in. Come in. What did you guys think about that short poem? Do you think that it's something we could learn together and read together when we are able to gather in the library again? Friends, I'm going to share another poem with you out of this book. And it is titled, Love. Ricky Wiesel, but he's home with the flu. Lizzie R.O. had some homework to do. Mitchell E. probably got lost on the way. So I'm all of love that could make it today. Friends, the last poem that I'm going to read out of this collection, Where the Sidewalk Ends by Shel Silverstein, is titled, Boa Constrictor. Do you know what a boa constrictor is? Are you scared of snake? I am, a little bit. What about you? Boa Constrictor. Oh, I'm being eaten by a boa constrictor, a boa constrictor, a boa constrictor. I'm being eaten by a boa constrictor. And I don't like it one bit. Well, what do you know? It's nibbling my toe. Oh, gee, it's up to my knee. 
Oh my, it's up to my thigh, oh fiddle, it's up to my middle. Oh heck, it's up to my neck. Oh dread, it's up to my... <clears throat> Friends, what did you think about that one? Are boa constrictors scary? There are a bunch of fun poems in this collection, friends. And they are fun to read, fun to share. And I hope that you enjoy the ones that I shared with you today. Friends, the last book that I'm gonna share with you today is one of my very favorites. A Bad Case of Stripes by David Shannon. Those of you that were coming to Stories in the Stacks with Summer, when we were able to gather at the Kaiser Community Library, know that I read this book. And I'm so happy to share it with you guys here today. Here we go, friend. A Bad Case of Stripes by David Shannon. Here we go, friends. A bad case of stripes. Camilla Cream loved lima beans, but she never ate them. All of her friends hated lima beans, and she wanted to fit in. Camilla always worried about what other people thought of her. Today, she was fretting even more than usual. It was the first day of school, and she couldn't decide what to wear. There were so many people to impress. She tried on 42 outfits, but none of them seemed quite right. She put on a pretty red dress and looked in the mirror. Then she screamed. Her mother ran into the room and she screamed too. Oh my heavens, she cried. You're completely covered with stripes. This was certainly true. Camilla was striped from head to toe. She looked like a rainbow. Mrs. Crane felt Camilla's forehead. Do you feel all right, she asked. I feel fine, Camille answered. But just look at me. You get back in bed this instant, her mother ordered. You're not going to school today. Camilla was relieved. She didn't want to miss the first day of school, but she was afraid of what the other kids would say and she had no idea what to wear with those crazy stripes. That afternoon, Dr. Bumble came to examine Camilla. Most extraordinary, he exclaimed. I've never seen anything like it. Are you having any coughing, sneezing, runny nose, aches, pains, chills, hot flashes, dizziness, drowsiness, shortness of breath, or uncontrollable twitching? No, Camilla told him. I feel fine. Well then, Dr. Bumble said, turning to Mrs. Cream. I don't see any reason why she shouldn't go to school tomorrow. Here's some ointment that should help clear up those stripes in a few days. If it doesn't, you know where to reach me. And off he went. The next day was a disaster. Everyone at school laughed at Camilla. They called her Camilla Crayon in Night of the Living Lollipop. She tried her best to act if everything were normal. But when the class said the Pledge of Allegiance, her stripes turned red, white, and blue, and she broke out in stars. The other kids thought this was great. One yelled out, let's see some purple polka dots. Sure enough, Camilla turned all purple polka dotty. Someone else shouted, checkerboard! 
and a pattern of squares covered her skin. Soon everyone was calling out different shapes and colors and poor Camilla was changing faster than you can change channels on a TV. That night, Mr. Harms, the school principal called. I'm sorry, Mrs. Cream, he said. I'm going to have to ask you to keep Camilla home from school. She's just too much of a distraction and I've been getting calls from the other parents. They're afraid those stripes may be contagious. Camilla was so embarrassed. She couldn't believe that two days ago, everyone liked her. Now nobody wanted to be in the same room with her. Her father tried to make her feel better. Is there anything I can get you, sweetheart? He asked. No, thank you, sighed Camilla. What she really wanted was a nice plate of lima beans, but she had been laughed at enough for one day. Hmm, well, yes, I see, Dr. Bumble mumbled when Mr. Crane phoned the next day. I think I'd better bring in the specialist. We'll be right over. About an hour later, Dr. Bumble arrived with four people in long white coats. He introduced them to the creams. This is Dr. Graff, Dr. Sponge, Dr. Cricket, and Dr. Young. Then the specialists went to work on Camilla. They squeezed, jabbed, tapped, and tested. It was very uncomfortable. Well, it's not the mumps, concluded Dr. Graff. Or the measles, said Dr. Sponge. Definitely not the chicken pox, put in Dr. Cricket. Or a sunburn, said Dr. Young. Try these, said the specialists. They each handed her a bottle filled with different colored pills. Take one of each before bed, said Dr. Grapp. Then they filed out the front door, followed by Dr. Bumble. That night, Camilla took her medicine. It was awful. When she woke up the next morning, she did feel different. But when she got dressed, her clothes didn't fit quite right. She looked in the mirror and there staring back at her was a giant multicolored pill with her face on it. Dr. Bumble rushed over as soon as Mrs. Crane called that this time Instead of the specialists, he brought the experts. Dr. Gord and Mr. Mellon were the finest scientific minds in the land. Once again, Camilla was poked and prodded, looked at and listened to. The experts wrote down lots of numbers. Then they huddled together and whispered. Dr. Gord finally spoke. It might be a virus, he announced with authority. Suddenly, little fuzzy virus balls appeared all over Camilla. Or possibly some form of bacteria, said Mr. Mellon. Out popped squiggly little bacteria tails. Or it could be a fungus, added Dr. Gord. Instantly, Camilla was covered with different colored fungus blotches. The experts looked at Camilla, then at each other. We need to go over these numbers again back at the lab, Dr. Gord explained. We'll call you when we know something. But the experts didn't have a clue, much less a cure. By now, the TV news had found out about Camilla. Reporters from Every channel were outside her house telling the story of the bizarre case of the incredible changing kid. Soon a huge crowd was camped out on the front lawn. Fergus. The creams were swamped with all kinds of remedies from psychologists Allergists, herbalists, nutritionists, psychics, an old medicine man, a guru, and 
even a veterinarian. Each so-called cure only added to poor Camilla's strange appearance until it was hard to even recognize her. She sprouted roots and berries and crystals and feathers and a long furry tail, but nothing worked. One day, a woman who called herself an environmental therapist claimed she could cure Camilla. Close your eyes, she said. Breathe deeply and become one with your room. I wish you hadn't said that, Camilla groaned. Slowly, she started to mount into the walls of her room. Her bed became her mouth, her nose was a dresser, and two paintings were her eyes. The therapist screamed and ran from the house. What are we going to do, cried Mrs. Cream. It just keeps getting worse and worse. She began to sob. At that moment, Mr. Cream heard a quiet little knock at the front door. He opened it, and there stood an old woman who was just as plump and sweet as a strawberry. Excuse me, she said brightly, but I think I can help. She went into Camilla's room and looked around. My goodness, she said with a shake of her head. What we have here is a bad case of stripes. One of the worst I've ever seen. She pulled a container of small green beans from her bag. Here, she said, these might do the trick. Are those magic beans, asked Mrs. Crane. Oh my, no, replied the kind old woman. There's no such thing. These are just plain old lima beans. I bet you like some, wouldn't you? She asked Camilla. Camilla wanted a big heaping plateful of lima beans more than just about anything, but she was still afraid to admit it. Yuck, she said. No one likes lima beans, especially me. Oh dear, the old woman said sadly. I guess I was wrong about you. She put the beans back in her bag and she started toward the door. Camilla watched the old woman walk away. Those beans would taste so good and being laughed at for eating them was nothing compared to what she had been going through. She finally couldn't stand it. Wait, she cried. The truth is, I really love lima beans. I thought so, the old woman said with a smile. She took a handful of beans and popped them into Camilla's mouth. Mmm, said Camilla. Suddenly the branches, feathers, and squiggly tails began to disappear. The whole room swirled around. When it stopped, there stood Camilla and everything was back to normal. I'm cured, she shouted. Yes, said the old woman. I knew the real you was in there somewhere. She patted Camilla on the head. Then she went outside and vanished into the crowd. Afterward, Camilla wasn't quite the same. Some of the kids at school said she was weird, but she didn't care a bit. She ate all the lime, she, lime of beans she wanted, and she never had even a touch of stripes again. The end. Hi friends, 
I hope that you enjoy the Bad Case of Stripes. It is one of my favorites because I think it's important to celebrate how we all are different. All right, friends, I'm going to switch things around here on my desk and we are going to do a small art project together, one that I like to call Freestyle Creating. What does that mean to you guys? Freestyle Creating. Any ideas? To me, it means you just create. You kind of go through your home with a grown up, collect things, pens, pencils, paints, recyclables, anything that you can create with. Sometimes we can find magazines that we can use to cut out pictures and words with a grown-up's permission. Sometimes we can find things outside that we can use to make prints and tracks with to create. I am going to gather some things just right here at my desk and come back with a short video. All right, friends, welcome to everyone's favorite part of Story in the Stacks with Summer, the art, creative time. As I said earlier, this week, we're just gonna do a little freestyle creating. So what I've done, friends, is I've gathered a few things from right here at my desk, and then I also gathered just an egg carton that I found right in the recycling bin. And I'm not exactly sure if I'll use it or not. All right, friends. What I have here is just a white sheet of printer paper. You could ask your grown-up for the supplies that you need for your freestyle creating. And I just gathered some random paper that I found in my desk. I also grabbed my scissors. I got these fun scissors that cut a squiggly line, a glue stick, and friends, I have just this recycled container that contains markers and colored pencils in it. And I pulled those out from the drawer. What did you guys find? Friends, I decided to take this A carton and smash it. So I'm just using my fingers here to break it open. Just kind of flatten it out. What did you gather at your desk or in your recycle bin? I know some people even have craft offices in their homes. All right, friends, so this is flattened out. And one thing I know about this particular egg carton is that when this got flattened out, there was a heart shape here. And I'm just gonna use my fingers to tear some of those shapes out. There are four of them here on the same carton. What have you found? What are you working on? So friends, what I have here, after tearing and ripping the egg carton away, are some heart shapes. No. They're not perfect, but art doesn't have to be perfect to anybody but the creator. And friends, I just have to let you know a little correction that the egg carton does not belong in the recycle bin if you live in Marion County. What I'm going to do now is just take some of my markers 
and I'm gonna color these hearts here. What are you guys doing? What are you creating? Are you creating while you're watching this video? Or are you watching and then you're going to go create? I sure miss gathering with you guys. It was always so much fun to gather around that table and do crafts and create with you guys. You always had some great stories to share. friends so oh I'll put a little bit more color in here so I just have one heart done here just added a little color to it and I'm gonna continue with my other hearts until they're filled with color So what I have here are my egg carton hearts and then I've decorated. So friends, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this green paper that I found and I'm going to use my regular scissors very carefully only with grown-ups around and I'm gonna cut some shapes into this paper that are gonna go with my hearts, a carton hearts. All right friends, what I've done here is cut four shapes, oval, long oval shapes out of the green paper. And what I'm going to do is look for a different glue. My glue stick probably isn't going to work to glue these a carton hearts right onto these long oval pieces and create a butterfly. So I'm going to look for another glue in my desk and glue these together and keep going in my freestyle creating. What are you creating friends? Or if you're just watching this video and you're going to create later, what are some of the thoughts and ideas that you're having? So friends, I did find some glue in my desk and I used that. I just put a little stripe of glue between that long oval shape and the egg carton heart. You could wait some time for these to dry if you're creating like I am, or you could just move on like I'm going to. If you're doing your own thing, keep going friends. So I'm just positioning these any old way on my paper to just kind of see what I want to create here. And I actually think I'm going to pick them up and uh, create some sort of background here on the white paper first before I attach these. So I'm just picking out uh, some blue markers that I have here in my little bin. Mm, maybe even some blue colored pencils to use 
two different tools here to create. So I've picked out these. It sure feels good to scribble. I just took those markers and colored pencils and scribbled. Friends, if you're gonna do any sort of scribbling art, you always wanna make sure to have something to protect your surface down. That's something that you could ask your grown-up for. And what I'm going to do is just stick these egg carton little creations right on that scribbled paper. Friends, I'm just digging. I know I have googly eyes here somewhere, but I can't find them in my desk. So I'm just gonna take a pen here and draw some eyes on these little shapes, creations that I've made here. Are you still gathering ideas? Or are you creating in your space like I am? I've drawn some eyes on my little creation here. Do you guys wanna see? All right, friends. Here is my little freestyle creation that I made today. I took some yellow paper and cut out these shapes and used a marker to write the words free to be you. And my project is done. Friends, if you created something with me here today, or if you got an idea for a creation to do while doing some freestyle creating, whatever the case is, I love for you to share some photos or even some videos that maybe your grown-ups could capture of you creating. You can send them to me directly by email, storiesinthestacks at gmail.com, or you can send them to the library, on their website, or on their Facebook page. And they'll make sure that I see them too. Friends, I hope that you enjoyed Stories in the Stacks of Summer Home Edition today. I enjoyed reading Where the Sidewalk Ends by Shel Silverstein. And I enjoyed sharing A Bad Case of Stripes by David Shannon with you. Friends, we're still unsure of when exactly the library is going to open. And so I am going to keep making these videos for you guys. And I hope that you guys will keep tuning in, keep reading, keep creating and crafting. And I can't wait to see you again. Psst. Friends, did you know that the Kaiser Community Library has its own summer reading program. Did you also know that the Kaiser Community Library has its own virtual book club for third, fourth, and fifth graders? There's more information coming on the Kaiser Community Library's website at kaiserlibrary.org.